One of the most crucial difference between Blender and ZBrush is functionality. ZBrush is widely known for its ability to sculpt on a more professional level, but aside that, it also does modeling, texturing, and painting. Whilst the Blender program can't seem to find exactly what it's great at, a jack of all trade for that matter, the release of Blender 2.8 brought some huge changes to the program, including bug fixes and much stability when it comes to high poly count in sculpting. Their latest 3.0 and above versions are even boasting to be a replacement to ZBrush. That's mostly from Blender fanboys and I get that. You should try giving out an expensive gift to someone for free and see how they praise you. They could even sometimes call you God's stepbrother. Yeah. Aside sculpting, Blender does modeling, animation, texturing, rigging, compositing, video editing, and even camera tracking. Since Blender is a complete package but ZBrush isn't, I'm not going to talk about everything they do else it wouldn't be a fair comparison. So I would only focus on the features both programs have in common and how those features compare to each other. Without wasting any more time, let's... Blender is better than Maya when it comes to modeling but it's ZBrush today so let's not lose focus. I just wanted to let you know how close Blender is to Maya right now. Most major studios have already integrated Blender into their pipeline for storyboarding and modeling. The developers of Blender right from the beginning didn't do a great job. The program had a lot of issues and worked in a very non-standard way. I'm very convinced that's one of the major reasons it couldn't gather a lot of army right from the beginning. Recent update made into Blender is really powerful and works in a very standard fashion. People moving from other 3D programs to model in Blender or people just wanting to try out something different wouldn't have anything to worry about since users can now configure Blender right at the moment they open the program to go with the settings and feel of certain popular programs they might have tried before, which is very awesome in my opinion. In terms of modeling, Blender is a really great starting point for anybody who wants to explore the world of 3D before throwing in money time and effort since it's completely free. We have other beast industrial level 3D programs like Maya, Houdini and 3D's Max which Blender has clearly pocketed at this moment when it comes to modeling. So you won't be making a bad choice choosing Blender if your main focus is to model. ZBrush is another 3D modeling program famously known for its sculpting abilities. Recent updates made in ZBrush brought some massive improvements to its hard surface modeling capabilities. ZBrush has better optimization and can handle heavy models without lagging. Though the software's modeling feature functions in a non-standard way, its workflow and user interface, I won't lie to you, is a little bit difficult to sail through. The software was previously owned by Pixelogic until it was purchased by Magazine in December 2021. A lot of rumors are flying around as to how Magazine is going to ruin the software, but I personally don't think so. Just by looking at how well Magazine has preserved Redshift and Red Giant, I'm confident they aren't going to mess ZBrush up. My only concern is that 1. I hope Magazine doesn't replace Cinema 4D sculpting abilities by integrating ZBrush into Cinema 4D for sculpting, and 2 which we all know might certainly happen, uh, the changes they are going to make on how they sell it. Maybe it might not be sold as a one-time purchase anymore. It's going to be on a monthly based subscription, just like how Adobe sells their products. In conclusion, I would say Blender has more tools for modeling, including a lot of techniques to make you model without stress. Because of the available depth Blender provides for modeling, its learning curve is a little steeper and so you might have to learn more and take some online courses to master it inside out. But I can assure you, it's easy and doesn't take time to master. The downside here is an average machine might struggle to handle heavy models. So if you are planning on taking modeling serious, then kindly spend some cash for a better machine. ZBrush on the other hand is more stable and can handle heavy objects even with an average machine spec. But because of its non-standard way of operating, it's a little tough if your main focus is to model. Since Blender is free, why not model in Blender? At the end of the day, you have nothing to lose.
don't be too quick to judge blended sculpting abilities else you might end up being categorized as an unintellectual biased fanboy now let's tackle this like real old g's sculpting is what separates zbrush from blender but there is more to it since a lot of sculptors are now using zbrush with blender as its side chick and i get it it's perfect also you aren't paying any extra cash for something you might think is inferior to your main sculpting software so you actually have nothing to lose in that process zbrush has focused the majority of its developments to enhancing the sculpting process with in-depth sculpting tools every professional would appreciate there are some major reasons why someone might choose zbrush over blender but the biggest of them all is one the computational power between the two zbrush can handle multiple millions of polygons whereas blender clearly struggles when the poly count gets higher this is primarily because of the way zbrush's algorithm renders image on screen as opposed to blender two would be the depth of two sets zbrush is powered by tons of brushes whereas blender is limited but we can't be too quick to settle the scores this way because blender just has the right amount of brushes you need whereas zbrush users might not even touch most of their brushes until they die but it's still cool to have them in there sculpting on a more professional level with zbrush is every 3d sculptor's dream since it's the most accepted and friendliest sculpting tool you would find in every movie and gaming house now the trick here is every professional will choose zbrush for sculpting over blender but blender in recent updates has provided tools that allow both freelancers and professionals sculpt entirely without needing the help of zbrush except for computational power some extra reasons why every digital sculptor would pay to use zbrush instead of blender for free is one zbrush gets you a job quicker as a digital sculptor than blender two it's advisable to use a software majority of the players are already running on this way you wouldn't be alienated when you run into a technical issue three the level of detail sculpting with zbrush is outstanding and then four you can work with zbrush on a long run because of the number of polygons it can handle but in all these let's not forget the level of skill an artist possesses is the ultimate let's not forget blender is also got certain sculpting features you cannot find in zbrush but there is certainly a lot of advantages sculpting in blender as well and one of them is that blender is completely free when it comes to getting a professional job done almost everybody would go in for zbrush and most of it would have to do with the reasons i just mentioned above Texture painting in ZBrush and Blender takes different approaches. I personally don't think anybody would even texture in ZBrush because it's very non-standard and not easy to sail through. ZBrush uses a feature called Spotlight to import textures in order to allow you paint it onto your model like you would do in Madbox. But my four major problems with poly painting in ZBrush is 1. There are no layers or blend modes. Two. In ZBrush, you can only paint your textures on the model but you don't get the ability to control UVs in order to apply texture maps. 3. ZBrush gives you the ability to import textures but then restricts you to only color maps. 3D code is definitely laughing at this point. The number 4 is that material effects are achieved by applying different preset materials to your model the procedural approach towards texturing or poly painting in zbrush never sticks in my head after i've left the software for a while so i actually don't think of texturing in zbrush especially when i'm on a more professional project there are tons of tutorials on youtube to get you started if zbrush is the only software you want to use for texturing at all cost but there are other alternatives like substance painter or mari if you don't want to texture in zbrush blender makes it easy with this one and blender users love it the most you can paint directly on your model manipulate textures and apply other texture maps to give you more control over the look of your material i won't say much but texturing in blender is light years ahead of zbrush making blender the better choice when texturing
I don't think anybody would want me to talk about rendering in this comparison, but for the sake of Blender, I would have to do it. Blender has two rendering motors, EV and Cycles. EV is a real-time rendering engine, while Cycle is a physical based path tracing engine, of which you can CPU or GPU render. Blender also gives you the advantage of adding third-party renders. A typical example would be V-Ray. ZBrush, on the other hand, have basic options, but you get the makers of Keyshot partnering with ZBrush to create a bridge between the software to allow you render at a price point. Again, I hope Magazine purchasing ZBrush will do something to make rendering in ZBrush become a thing instead of having to pay to render. One great advantage you get for using ZBrush is the ability for ZBrush to function on a CPU without any problem, meaning you don't necessarily need a GPU if you don't have the money to acquire one yet, though having one is a good way to keep your software blazing. According to the ZBrush website, the minimum spec for one to start using ZBrush will be 4 to 6 GB of RAM and 8 GB free space on your hard drive, but we all know these are baby specs, right? ZBrush works on Windows and Mac OS. You don't get ZBrush for Linux. Blender brags about their software being very light and smooth. With as low as 4GB of RAM and 1GB of GPU, you will be able to run this complete suit. Now, this is my personal opinion. 16 to 32GB of RAM. It should be an Intel CPU with a high core count and an Nvidia GPU because of the CUDA implementation in Blender. I will do a separate video talking about 3D animation, GPUs, CPUs, hard drives and stuff and why certain softwares should be run on either AMD or Nvidia. Blender works perfectly on Mac OS, Windows and Linux. No long talks on this one. Blender is completely free for both private and commercial use and it's also 100% open source. ZBrush on the other hand has a price tag of 895, let's just say 900 for the complete suit. You can also opt in for their 6 months plan which is $180 which you would have to renew every time it expires. I wouldn't get into their educational license because Magazine just purchased ZBrush and I'm thinking there are going to be some changes there. Yeah, let me leave that blank so I don't mislead anybody. There is also a trial version you can opt for before making the final decision to purchase it or not. Additionally, Pixelogic offers a cheaper option with fewer features called ZBrush Core, which has 32 brushes compared to the 300 brushes you get in the complete suit. If you are thinking of a way to work between Blender and ZBrush, then kindly check out an add-on called GOZ, G -O -Z, also known as GOB, G -O -B. It establishes a convenient bridge between both applications without you having to go through so much trouble. I have left a link to the add-on in my description below if it might be of interest to you. Now, kindly take notice of this, I would really appreciate it. If there was any important information I left out of this video, Kindly feel free to detail it out in the comment section below. Newbies would appreciate it. This video was getting so long. So, so long. I had to leave out a lot of information to the extent where I couldn't even talk about UV mapping. But hey, I'll definitely do that some other time. Okay, kindly don't forget to subscribe. See you in my next video. Peace out.